Hello, and welcome to another video. This question can be solved using pre-calculus methods or using calculus method. And the reason why you have those two options is because we'll be dealing with a parabola. Okay, and if you're dealing with a parabola, which is, um, uh, this function is a portion of a parabola that opens to the right, as you can see. So that's why you have two options. So it's, it's um, relevant to a pre-calculus class, it's also relevant to a calculus class. So whatever class you're in, just um, note the method that you're supposed to use in either case, because you don't want to start taking derivatives if you are in pre-calculus class. You're going to be a suspect if you do that. Okay, so let's take care of this. Um, firstly, whatever the function you're given, if you're asked to find the distance between, or the closest distance between a function and a point, Okay, then definitely they're talking about a certain point on that function and the distance of that point to another given point. So let's make a sketch of this and so you have an idea of it. You don't need to sketch this because uh, you, we will not need this sketch, but just to provide a visual um, representation. See, what we have is you have a function, let's say this is a graph, and you want to sketch the graph of y equals square root of x. Well, it would be something like this. Okay, so that graph will be something like that. But we want to know how far, what point on this curve is closest to the point three zero. Well, the point three zero is, say this is one, two, so let's say this is point three, so this is point zero. What point on this graph is closest to this? Some might say it's this point, some might say it's this point, or this point, or this point. We don't know what point, or even the origin, we don't know what point is the closest. So looking at the picture, you might assume that it's one of these points, but we don't know. But we know that whatever that point is, the coordinates of the point will be x, y. Okay? And the coordinates of this point is 3, 0. We just want to know the distance between this point and this point, and that distance has to be the minimum distance. That's all you've got to do. So you see, you don't really need to sketch the curve. You just need to know what the function is. And remember, this point x, y here, what did we say y is? We said y is the square root of x. So you can actually write, rewrite this point like this and say, we want to find the distance between x and y. But instead of writing y, you write the square root of x. Okay, and the second point is the point three, zero. So what is the distance between point A and B? So that's the basic idea. So remember, you'll be given a point and a function. Whatever the function is, just isolate your Y, know what Y is, and you'll be able to do it. Or you might have to isolate X, okay? It depends on how easy it is to isolate one or the other. Now that we have this cleared up, Let's measure the distance between two points. Remember the distance formula? So that's what we're going to say. So we're going to say that distance AB, okay, the distance AB, let's represent it as D, is equal to, um, let's square it, so we don't have to take square roots, okay? So we're going to say the square of the distance between two points is, let's do x minus 3, the x minus 3 squared, plus, and this is going to be, square root of x minus 0 squared. So this will simplify into, if we break this open, it's going to be, I said break this open, if we expand it, it's going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9. And when you expand this, it's going to be just plus x, because it's the square root of x minus 0, and the square of square root of x is just x. So this will simplify into x squared minus 5x plus 9. That is what d squared will amount to. Now this point is where some students don't know what to do because this is not distance, this is the square of the distance. And remember, the question is not asking you to find the distance. It's just saying, what will x be when this is the closest, when it's the smallest distance? So you have to start thinking of the term minimum. When do you have the minimum occurring in a parabolic function? 
okay? So when you have a parabola that opens up because the leading coefficient is positive, so you'll be having, so your, the square of your distance will have this shape. When will that square of your distance be minimum? Because, listen, this is going to be minimum and the distance itself will be minimum. So the square of anything is minimum when that thing itself is minimum. Okay, so you don't need to take the square root of both sides and worry yourself about that. Just know that the minimum will occur at the lowest point. So if this is a pre-calculus class you wanna, or student, you want to make sure you deal with it as a parabola, okay? If this is a calculus class, well, you want to just take the derivative and establish the fact that anything will be minimum or maximum at, yeah, you get it, okay, when the slope of the function is equal to zero. So you just have to find the derivative. When the derivative is zero, it's either a maximum or a minimum, and then you can decide that at the end. So let's get into this one and just use the curve to do this. Now, for pre-calculus, this is the pre-calculus solution I'm about to show you. Now, we just want to know what's the minimum point on this function. And how do we do that? Well, rewrite this um, as a parabola with a vertex and then with a center, okay? Remember, you'll be able to de determine um, what the vertex line is, and it's at that point, the value of x at that point, is the point where you have the minimum because we know it's a parabola that opens up, okay? So it's gonna have a minimum. We don't need to worry about that. So how do we rewrite this? Well, I'm gonna have, so we say d squared is minimum at the vertex of the curve of x squared minus 5x plus 9. So we just need to know what the vertex of this is. There's so many ways you can use the formula, which is what I think you should do, or you can write it in um, by completing the squares and then you can find it. Well, if you want to do the shortcut, the vertex of a, of a parabola, vertex is at x equals minus b over 2a, that's where you're gonna have your vertex. So use the formula and you'll get it. Well, let's quickly plug that in and see what happens. So minus b over 2a implies x equals minus negative five over two times one, which gives us five over two. So it's at the point where x is five over two. So when we go back to this graph, the value of x at that point is five over two, which is 2.5, so it's somewhere around here. Okay, so it's 2.5, and then you can find what y is, and that means, so, this means the point 5 over 2, and what would be the y, the corresponding y coordinate? It's the square root of x, which would be the square root of 5 over 2. If you use the formula, if you choose to not use the formula here, which is, I think, is a very good trait for you to get your answer. If you choose to not use the formula and decide to write in, um, you complete the squares, what you're going to do is complete these squares and just say, okay, another option. Let's put it this way. So you can say x squared minus 5x plus 9. We want to try to complete the squares here. Well, we're going to take half of this and square it. So I'm going to rewrite it as x squared minus 5x. Half of this is going to be um, negative 5 over 2. And then when I square that, it's going to be plus 25 over 4. Well, because I added 25 over 4, I must subtract 25 over 4 also. But I'll do that separately. Well, let's restore the 9. Well, you can just do that. Minus 25 over 4 plus 9. So you've taken care of this one. It hasn't changed anything, but we just want to make sure this part is out. Okay, we're going to do this. So this now is a perfect square, which is x minus 5 over 2 squared. That's what you generated here. And because you were trying to get rid of this, you have this. What is negative 25 over 4 plus 9? It's going to be 11 over 4 plus 11 over 4. Well, nobody cares about this because at this point, what we're looking for is just what 
the vertex will be? Well, this is the vertex. Okay, the x um, coordinate of the vertex is 5 over 2, and you can see it there. You, so you see why I think the formula is just cleaner? Because you have to do extra work to do this. Again, it depends on what is allowed or what is required. But you must know how to write um, an expression, how to complete the squares um, for a quadratic um, expression. So basically, that's it. So you have your vertex here, which also gives you the number 5 over 2, and you know the y coordinate will be the square root of x. Pre-calculus. Now, to do the calculus aspect of it, it's basically the same principle. It's just that we will not be using this formula. We will be taking derivatives. Let's take the derivatives now. For the calculus solution, we say that just the same way, d squared will be minimum when this function is minimum. That's all. Okay? So we're going to state clearly that d squared is minimum when x squared minus 5x plus 9 is minimum. And when is this minimum? Well, this function is minimum or maximum. We're, we're not sure, okay? But we know it's going to be. But let's see. But we know there's going to be a minimum or a maximum when the derivative of the function is equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to say that of x squared minus 5x plus 9 will be zero at max or min. So we're going to behave as if we're not sure it's going to be a minimum. You see, from this, we could tell from pre-calculus it's going to be a minimum. But in calculus, well, you're not sure it's going to be a minimum or a maximum. Okay, let's see what kind of function it's going to be. Okay, and it's always safer to do that. So let's take the derivative of this. So we say ddx of x squared minus 5x plus 9 will be equal to 0 at that point. That means 2x minus 5 will be equal to 0. That means x will be 5 over 2. So this is then the question. At this point, is this distance minimum or is it maximum? Let's find out. This is where you create your sine chart. So the sine chart tells you that our critical number here is 5 over 2. So what you do is pick a number that is less than 5 over 2 and the number that is greater than 5 over 2 and tell yourself whether this, what's happening to the slope. Remember, this is the slope function or the derivative. So you have 2x minus 5. I would, what I would do usually is I would write 2x and then I'll write, just write 2x minus 5. Let's see what happens. So you have the function 2x minus 5. We want to judge and see. We know at this point it's going to be 0, okay? Let's see what's happening to the slope on the left and what hap what's happening on the right. So pick a number less than 5 over 2. Let's pick that's less than 5 over 2. That's less than 2.5. So let's take 2. If you plug in 2 here, this is going to be 2 times 2, 4 minus 5, that's negative. So the slope is negative at this point, which means that the curve is coming this way. Let's see what happens after this point. Now, if you get to this point, so it's coming this way. Um, let's pick a number that is greater than 2.5. That would be 3. Let's plug in 3 here. Well, 3 minus 5, I mean 6 minus 5 is going to be positive, so the slope is leaning this way. So what you notice is that the slope comes this way and then this way. That's a minimum. Okay, so it comes down. I can no longer go down. I'm going up. And then the curve goes up, and now you have a minimum point. So at this, it is certain that this is the minimum point. Okay, just using the sign chart. So we can say that the minimum point is the point um, 5 over 2 and square root of 5 over 2. Remember, square root of 5 over 2 is the coordinate, the y coordinate. And that's why we just go straight and write that. So you see, it's just basic. But you have to show this that you know it's the minimum point. That's why the calculus solution is a little bit different. 
It doesn't just say, it can just say, I know it. You have to show that it's a minimum point because it's possible that there's no minimum distance um, from that point. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.